Kenny Loggins <laughs> yep. right here in San Diego yep. at SeaWorld Shamu Stadium. And Kenny was was running back and forth on the dry area, right? And the audience was way on the other side of the water. And he's trying to get the audience up and everything. And uh, right where Shamu would do it, come up, belly up on there, he steps off into it with his guitar on. And we're all going, <gasps> he's going to go up in a puff of green smoke or something. Gratefully, he had the presence of mind mm -hmm. to not touch his guitar. <laughs> or there would be no more Kenny Loggins. to Drummer's High. We're having a really good time with my friend Tris and Bowden, and uh, I'm sure you all know Tris, Chicago, and, and uh, Kenny Loggins, etc. Et I mean, hundreds of albums, hundreds of songs, and uh, you know what? Very good positive attitude, surfing man, <laughs> enjoying life. Tris, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you too, Andy. <laughs> it's been too long. Bro. Yeah, I'm glad we're here. <laughs> Me too, buddy. So we're, we're talking about the, the attitude of drumming and the way that it, it affects everything that happens in your life. Uh -huh. and, um, and, and you've had moments where, well, for example, we were talking about when you had cancer. Yeah. And, and it's not just the, the physical part that you have to go through, but the attitude. Right. And, and tell me, how did drumming inform that part of, of, of your treatment or, or at least your, your, your steps towards the cure? Well, I'd always had sort of... Uh, intuitively an inkling that drumming, in addition to something that I had no choice, I was drawn to, <laughs> and then I was in too deep before I knew it. Uh, yeah. But I'd always had a feeling that it was really beneficial health-wise, too. Yep. And, I mean, it's kind of obvious. There is the, the uh, uh, anaerobic and the aerobic side. Yep. Uh, but uh, I... I love that this show is called Drummer's High because because <laughs> that's what I would get, yeah. you know. And and being a runner mm -hmm. as well, I knew what that was like. Ah, you know? And uh, yeah. of course, the running came later. I started playing when I was eight, and I was I was running, but I wasn't getting high, yeah. you know. <laughs> but but when it, back to cancer. Um, I have to say that that uh, we were on the road. I was on the road with Chicago. I yep. mean, I'd been with the band for almost 30 or 20 years, anyway, a little over 20 years at that point. And uh, <clears throat> the band was touring together with Earth, Wind & Fire. Ah, and that fun. was one of my favorite tours to yeah. do because we'd play together, both Earth, Wind & Fire and Chicago, for part of the, the show yep. and playing those songs with those guys. Oh, you know, yeah. Man. And so, that feel. So, God, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so here, here I was in Nashville. I was treated at Vanderbilt for lung cancer, no less, Stage 3A squamous cell wow. with only a 14% chance of making it to five years. Mm. And uh, I was trying not to circle the drain, you know, just thinking negatively, right? Yep. Yep. But um, I, w I managed to do that and keep my, my, my positive attitude, which was is so important in cancer. But I knew intuitively that I had to get back on the road and start playing, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I'd look at my watch and go, okay, uh, God, it's about 8.15 where they are right now. They're probably playing Written in the Stone. And I, I love that song. I want to do it. I want to be there, oh, you know? no kidding. So you had it down after, that well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, knew, I knew, you know, with, I had an itinerary, yep. you know? So, so anyway, long story short, I'll try to make it short. Just take uh, your time. Okay, well, all right. Uh, but uh, it was six months only yeah. from when I was diagnosed to uh, simultaneous chemo and radiation, yeah. surgery, post-op chemo, and then uh, then like the recovery time was six, six months, months only. And it was because I went too soon. Uh. I, the doctors are going, no, it's a little early. And I'm going, I have to do this. Yeah. If I don't, I'm going to let die. Yeah. And so I did. And then, you know, I was seeing stars and everything. I mean, you know, playing in Houston, 105 degrees. And, and here I am, yeah. the unilunger now. I'm minus one lung. 
So, <laughs> but playing together with John Paris, he and I have such oh. a thing too. You know, we're so locked. He's a cool him. dude. God, too. I love yeah. him. I love him so much. <laughs> so anyway, I know that that it was just key to my recovery. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and my survival. Ultimately, my survival. So. So I, I like yeah. to talk to people about how drumming has informed the rest of their life. Uh -huh. But that example is so poignant. Uh -huh. I mean, really. Other people, and, and rightly so, are talking about how they, they think, the way they play, the way they think about other things, uh -huh. uh, almost like a meditative state at times. Yes. And, yeah. and, but you, that just completely oh, man. informed and took care of you. It did. It yeah. really did because it nourished not just my physical side, you know, mm. it, like build up my, 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 my lung capacity and, and, and physically, you yeah. know, rebuilt me. But my 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 spiritual side, my yeah. <laughs> my need to play, yeah. my, my my I'm so compelled to feel the groove. I gotta I gotta have it, you know. Oh, so I know. All yeah. of those things, man. <laughs> yeah, they just combine to to aid in my survival. I, <laughs> I know it. I really know it. Yeah. yeah, you can feel that positivity, and and, and yeah. you know the type of music that you play. It's got such great feel, and and, and uh, you've got a nice pocket, right? Yeah, thank yeah. you, bro. <laughs> thanks, man. And that I can understand. You just feel that smack and the energy that you're putting out yeah. coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's got to be something that helps in everything that you do, changing your your mindset oh, totally. and and your physical being. Oh, totally, mm. totally. And you and you mentioned medit meditative state too it's yep. med like it is that mm. you know it, it is a meditation and and you know i've always likened uh those moments where where you have ceased to play it's not even you anymore it's almost like you're just a conduit being played and that's mm -hmm. when when in my experience when when i've played my absolute best right and and played stuff i could never have played otherwise. I, I don't know where it came from, you know? Yeah. It's, a, it's <laughs> the heavenly that, energy coming it in, right? Is, yeah. it, 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 it. So you're always in search of making that happen, you know? But, but uh, you know, it's an elusive thing. Well, that, that energy, what you're talking about, is, is why I wanted to start this series, is because there's that the drummer's high. Yeah. As you're playing along, suddenly everything coalesces and you're in a different zone. Yes. And, and like yeah. you said, I'm playing things I didn't think I could. Yeah. yeah you can. Man, yeah. But when you think about it, you can't. You can't. Yeah. No, don't think too hard. Right. Man, absolutely, man. God dang. Hey, you got to love oh. that energy. Oh, man. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> and man, that's the whole key in my experience, too, to, oh, God, just to, to play in a groove, you mm. know, for that matter. Uh, you know, if you're thinking about every note too much mm -hmm. it's like what well, that was a little behind well oh i gotta adjust that was ahead <laughs> you know it's like and you know don't you'll drive be yourself a, nuts you'll be a rhythm ranger before you know it <laughs> and, <laughs> that's a good line <laughs> and, <laughs> and man I, I learned that in the studio everything i played on playback i was like god dang and i thought i was killing it you know but no Playback tells no lies on the white screen. How did the band feel about it? Yeah, well, that's the thing too. They were probably as nervous, and or probably enjoying it as much. <laughs> well, that's true too. Yeah, no, you I was kept the about, gig for twenty years, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was talking about in the early days of ah, recording. You know, okay. yeah, yeah. No, I, I got there. <laughs> I did get there. <laughs> I mean, early days. So when yeah. you were first, you said you were like eight when you first started. Yes. What was uh, it that, that made you think, hey, this is cool. I want to try this. Okay. Now, this sounds dumb. Uh, and I've said, I've told this story maybe a thousand times. So excuse me for repeating myself here. But but uh, my dad had taken me to a parade when I was about six. Right. And I was standing there and this drum section went by. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, man. I did not know whether to laugh or cry. I was so moved. I was like, I mean, I still remember that feeling. And it was like, I was five or six years old. But it was so powerful. And it wasn't just the, you know, the volume or anything like that. It was the groove yeah. and what they were playing. It was like, man, it did something to my heart. And I, and I knew then, I knew at that moment, that's something I'm going to do. I mean, I have to. I have no choice. So it wasn't you know, even so like, a, less, like a spark and then a few more that grew. It was just... Bam, right now. That's right then. it. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And I've had other interests, you know, in my life, but but that was always paramount from that day. Mm. You know. And, and and your folks were 
Keen to help you do it? Pretty much. Good. Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> you know, they were concerned about, you know, some of the things that go along with being a musician. You well, know? Like broken but, pots and pans? Well, there was that early <laughs> on. Yeah. That's my best spoon. And yeah. You just broke it on the pot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, go to your room. So, <laughs> but, uh, but actually, yeah, they were. They yeah. were. And... It was my garage always that was the, you know, the band rehearsal place, you know, so. <laughs> well, it's hard uh, to move a drum kit, the, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's right, yeah. And, and, uh, and I'll never forget my mom, you know, the, when the cops would come to tell, oh. make, make a stop or whatever, my mom would get in their face and say, look, would you rather that they're out terrorizing somewhere where I don't know where they are mm -hmm. and you don't have any idea what they're up to, or would you rather they're here, mm. like doing something, you know, positive. creative and positive, yeah. you know? <laughs> so the, Your mom was really pretty argue. cool. She was pretty, way <laughs> yeah. cool. She and did you live in a neighborhood? Cool. Oh, well, I did. I grew up in, in uh, Sunset Beach, California, okay. and uh, which is in Orange County, and then mm -hmm. Huntington Harbor, and that's where band rehearsals really started was there. Okay. And then moved, my family just kept moving further and further south and, <laughs> until I flew the coop in Newport Beach. And, and then uh, I just moved further south. You just you know, kept coming? I, yeah, I did. <laughs> and now I'm way south, so yeah. Well, and at the same time, um, you know, a different interest, uh -huh. surfing. Oh, God. Right. Yeah. I, and and yeah. it's one of your passions now. Absolutely. And so, always has been. And, yeah. and uh, tell me, you see differences or, or similarities between that and, and playing? Oh, man. You know, there, that's really a great question because <laughs> there, it's really a great question because you know how you can hear like two bars or some or sometimes less or four bars yep. of a of a of a drummer that you you really like and go that's Gad right? okay yeah, or that's yep. Garibaldi yep. or that's you know yep. uh, similarly with surfing. You know, it's such a personal mode of expression, mm. you know, stylistically, man, I'm telling you, I can see a bottom turn. And if I'm familiar with the, the surfer, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll go, I, that's that, you know, that's so-and-so, that's Kelly Slater, that's Laird Hamilton, that's, you know, whoever. So it's you know, like, like it's that. like with drumming, you understand <clears throat> their voice, you know, the, the, yes. the artistic voice. Absolutely. Right. And, Absolutely. The, and the, yeah. now you're seeing an artistic motion. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, totally, and and it is, it's a kind of dance. You know, Russ Kunkel, the great drummer, Russ Kunkel, sure. has always said that surfing, you know, is is a dance. He's a surfer. Oh yeah, actually, you know, come Serious to think of it, surfer. he looks like he would be. Yeah, yeah. man, he's he's surfed as long as I have, oh, all really? the way back to his childhood, I think. Oh, you know? cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. So you you had those clues. You knew what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. and and you you the moment that you saw that band, that was when when everything struck. So uh -huh. you you were on your way, and you knew what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. As you were growing, you were you were creating your own voice, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And and in the bands that you played with, that the voice would change, and you could see how that was. Could you see how that was uh -huh. affecting and informing the way the bands played? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, Specifically yeah. to that, uh, if I were influenced or had been listening more to more Latin playing, yeah. for example, yeah. that would definitely, you know, affect, you know, their approach too. Cool. You know, once they'd hear those influences, yeah. you know, and once you're in a band that's really, you know, the guys Tight. can play, you yeah, know, play, and they're, <laughs> you're really listening to each other, you know, mm. yeah. Totally. Oh, that's awesome. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, what's going on in your mind? You you put that on the drums, and these guys have been playing with you long enough uh -huh. and are good enough uh -huh. to be able to interpret that and and take your energy uh -huh. and put it into their instrument as well. Yes. Yes. Dang. Abs absolutely. And did that come back? Oh yeah, yeah. It, well, it depends on the musical situation. Mm. You're on a jazz situation, right? Mm -hmm. There is so much of that immediacy and and the moment, you know, right. and, and it's it's the art form of that moment, yep. you know, and so uh, when I was playing with Al Jarreau, for example, mm -hmm. he w would encourage you and everybody in the band at every man. We were tighter and oh man, a duck's butt <laughs> swimming upstream backwards, but yes. he always wanted you to stretch. Good. You know? Yeah. It, and it was so cool because I'd come from a more regimented thing with Kenny Loggins, mm -hmm. who, as a rock guy, to his defense, is 
pretty improvisational. Good. But to Jerome, yeah, man, it was like you know, and he was like, "Give it to me, I need it," you know. I mean, he wanted it, and if he heard somebody liked, he'd turn around and go, "Ladies and gentlemen, he stopped singing." Tristan Bowden on drums, and he, and he wasn't sarcastic. It was Good like, for him. Yeah, "Yeah, what a beautiful spirit." Man. Yeah, you know. So yeah, that's kind of hard to find in a lot of players. Oh isn't it? man, <laughs> yeah. I'll say. In fact, he's one of the few performers I've worked with. I think that that you know, he, he, I mean, he had to do it. He had mm. to. To, to point you out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I always have watched drummers, and, and as drummers, we, we talk to each other differently. Mm -hmm. we, we embrace each other when we see each other. Yeah. We share. We have no inhibitions about doing that kind I of thing. I love that, man. And, yeah. and give, me, yeah. give me some incidents. Or, or incidents. Uh -huh. yeah. Times, yeah, yeah, <laughs> when that happened, when it, because that it's one of my favorite parts about being a drummer. You never yeah. see anybody else do it. Possibility yeah. of some horn players. Yeah, uh -huh. I was corrected on that by, by Garibaldi. Said, oh, is that yeah, right? Don't be so stiff. Okay, <laughs> but, but give right? me some some well, incidents when that kind of thing happened. Well, geez, David, for example, yep. you know, mm -hmm. David, yep. I it was one of my long, long time heroes mm -hmm. and a huge influence on my playing. Sure. And uh, and when I met him, we were talking about, you know, people that you're intimidated by. I was almost <laughs> struck speechless, oh. too. You know, because it was David Garibaldi, for Christ's sake. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I but he was so welcoming and he knew of me and he knew of my work and he liked my work. Yeah. And it was like, even even though I, I plagiarized him to the max, you know, on so many <laughs> records, but 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 he was so willing to share and give and give back. I mean, exchange ideas. In fact, you know, he's still sending me transcriptions. If I text him, hey, what'd you just play on? You know, like on the serious side or on the, the new album on on. Uh, 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 soul sided town. There you, you know? go. Yeah, yep. uh, he will send me a transcription. Oh, man. man, I mean, it's just so <laughs> wonderful. But you know, I think that that uh, we, we drummers have a fraternity kind yep. of. You know. Yeah. And I've always felt that. Yeah. Man. And it's I I just love it. it and. And I have a theory about it. I mean, aside from the fact that, that, you know, we're just willing to give to each other and willing to share. I think it might be because we take so much crap from all the other musicians <laughs> that we play with. It's like, yeah, okay. like Richie Hayward you had a quote. Oh, I love Richie. It, me too. Yeah. My God, he and I were really tight. He said, <laughs> he said, I'm having a bad night and it's all your fault, you know. <laughs> Talking about somebody else in the band, right? Yeah. It's always the drummer's fault. You know, we're the first to get the death look from the singer or, you know. <laughs> I had a friend who was telling me he played in, in bands with, with you know, lead singers, right? Uh -huh. they, they, they were the act. Uh -huh. And he said every time something went wrong, the bass player hit something wrong, even the keyboards, I'd get this. <laughs> and I'd say, well, <laughs> what'd you do? He goes, it took me a while to figure it out, and I, I just sort of accepted it. Yeah. I'm the guy who can't move. <laughs> That's right. They know where I am. <laughs> yeah, that guy, I can't stop playing and slug him. <laughs> well, else can. Ginger Baker might have something oh. to say about that. <laughs> oh, man. Mr. Baker, beware. Yeah. Well, actually, it's one of my favorite stories when he was playing. Yeah. I think it was with Jack, and they were playing a jazz jazz gig, yeah. and he got upset with the way he was playing, and he just kept looking over, and after a while, he stood up and clocked him. Wow. Knocked him out. And Holy he was smoke. a stand-up bass went, Boom! Right off. And he sits down, looks at the piano player, I think it was, and goes, good, now we can play. And oh, my God! Oh, I never heard that. Oh, man. Oh, man. There are exceptions to the drummer, yes. you know. Yes, there are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There have to be those to no. prove the rule. No. Yeah. That's right. Exception, oh. not the rule. Oh, oh man. We're talking about, you know, as you're playing, the mental ability, the physical ability, but also, I mean, you're projecting energy uh -huh. into your instrument. Uh -huh. Do you do you think of it as, as it's a tool, so it's doing what you ask it to do, or is it giving back and informing you as a player as oh, well? Oh, absolutely. There, there's that exchange, yeah. totally. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I've always, every drum set is different, too. Even the same dimensions of a drum. Yeah. You know, yeah. they all have their own personality. Mm -hmm. In fact, they, the Africans, I think, in certain parts of Africa, West Africa, I think, when they make their drums, they, they do, there's a ceremony. They do. Yeah. Yep. 
That's what I had mm -hmm. understood. Mm. And they, they believe that each drum has a soul. Yep. I love that. Oh, God, it gives me goosebumps. I think that that's the coolest thing, man. Because I think that, too. I've kind of sensed that before. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, I want to listen to that drum. I want it to show me what to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Know? What's it saying so, to me? Yeah, yep. yeah, mm. absolutely. I feel that yeah. way about cymbals. Uh, oh, yeah. But, but I hey, do, too. I'm biased. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand you should be. Yeah. But, you know, you, we were talking a little bit about, you know, you, 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 with the energy that comes from it, and then you hit something, and it's like, uh, wow, it's informing when it's coming back. Yeah. And, and the excitement that you get and how that can be infectious. Oh, God, yes. When, when I hear a good symbol. Yeah. And just play it, all of a sudden, you know, the hair stands up yeah, in the back yeah, of your neck. Yeah, You've yeah. had that feeling. Oh, yeah, The hair stands absolutely. up. Well, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> it did. It <laughs> Yeah. I think I, I've got a couple in my back. <laughs> you know, a few on my chest and some in my nose. You know, <laughs> that's all I can claim. It always grows in the right place, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe I can go for a comb over if I just grow enough out my nose. <laughs> they can edit that. Okay. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> no, we can't. Oh man. Oh. So, okay. So we we've been talking about that. How the the energy comes back and forth and back and forth. Are you feeling that from? You are feeling, of course, from the other players. Oh yeah. But your your sensibility, the way that you're feeling your drum set, and the way that the energy is coming back from that, uh -huh. are you feeling it from the other instruments, or or because you're not playing them, oh. you can't feel it, or can you feel the players' emotions coming right into you? That's a great question, man. Mm. And I absolutely can feel the others' emotions. Mm. In fact, I mean to a point where <laughs> it's like it's spooky. After you've been, well, I was with. Chicago for 28 years. I mm -hmm. could tell what mood everybody was in within a few bars, you know. Oh, man. And, and okay. uh, with, with Loggins, you know, I worked mm -hmm. with him for so long, I could look at his back and tell what he was feeling. And, you know, I mean, he liked that about me, too, mm -hmm. there for, for a long time. Because I knew when he wanted to lean on a chorus, you know, or or whatever, and it wasn't anything he he would do. It's just I knew him that well, man. you know. Yeah. And and uh, you know that reminds me of something um, like moments that we all live for yeah. as as drummers yeah. and as musicians collectively. Uh, you know, I was talking about how how my best. Best playing has always been when I cease to to be the guy playing, mm -hmm. and I become a conduit through which inspiration just kind of flows through. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all experienced this, and man, there's nothing like it. But when those players that you know so well are all experiencing it at the same time, right? And then it's logarithmic mm -hmm. what happens. I mean, it's it's like critical mass or something, you know? Awesome, I mean, it's it? so magical. I get, see what Just little hair about I it, have? Right? Yeah. There's actually hair there, and it's standing up. And even these jaded nipples are getting hard here. So, <laughs> Oh, man. I'm sorry, I'm pushing it. I'm, not... <laughs> I'm okay with it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> oh man <laughs> but it's true yeah, it's really the truth those, those, I mean you know that feeling I you know? do <laughs> it's amazing man and when the whole band it becomes that conduit mm -hmm. look out man the magic and the audience whoa boy do they know it too right they're, they're seeing something on, off the scale special mm. you know I mean they came to see a band they loved already but they've never seen a band like this yeah Watch you know? moments like that? Oh, yes. They're, oh, they're incredible oh, as an yeah. audience member, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, God, mm. man. You levitate out of your seat, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm reaching under my leg again. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hit you with the, with the fast five. Okay. All right? Non-drummers. Okay. Top three heroes. Jacques Cousteau. Ah, okay. Why? 
I, he was just the, such a brilliant pioneer. Yeah. And and uh, our planet, this this planet, the rock spinning in space is the majority of it is ocean, and he. Uh -huh. So courageous and just, I, I love, and so curious. Yeah. Right. And and, and uh, so informative and so excited about it and to, to bring these mysteries to, to light. And now, you know? what you find in him, uh -huh. do you, you, because he's your hero, you must be feeling the same things, the curiosity, oh, the, yeah. the sense of adventure, wanting yeah. to take a little bit of risk. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Mm, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, is that part of, of being a musician, or is that just the way you are? Well, I think it's part of, if if you're a musician and you 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 love it, yeah, and and you're in it long enough, mm -hmm. you can't help it because it's so infinite. Music is infinite. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, yeah. it'll never all be played. Mm. You know, it can't be. It's just a mathematical impossibility. You're making you me. Know? You're, you're reminding me of of uh, was during uh, Lincoln's presidency when the guy who was in charge of the patent office uh -huh. said, "We're closing it down. Everything's been invented that can be invented." Oh. Right? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> 1860. Classic. What? Oh, Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Stick around, Bob. I wish you could see what's about to happen. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, that's classic. <laughs> man, that is classic. Oh. Okay, so there's one, a very good one. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe Paramahansa Yogananda, whom hmm. spiritually yep. was such an enlightened, enlightened man. And his whole philosophy was that there have been many other enlightened men yep. that have teachers that mm -hmm. have visited at different periods of time are, are this plane that we're on. Mm. So he created a, a religion kind of that's that's not really a religion so much as a philosophy of, right. of incorporating and embracing all those enlightened ones. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, this is the only way, this is, you know, mm. it's like... He believed, you know, Jesus Christ, Muhammad, you know, Krishna, you know, Buddha, all, you know, and they all talk about the same thing. Yes. It's all the same. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not Man. Something? Isn't that something? <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. And it comes down to that philosophy. Was he a bodhisattva or is, is he, was he a, a, a different type of enlightened person? Well, um, he was, uh, it was a yogi. A yogi, like there, okay. There, there's a, there's a, a great book. Uh, and it was autobiography of a yogi. Mm. Ah, he wrote. about him. Yeah, about yep. him. Mm. And uh, oh man, it's just ama an amazing gift to us. As okay, humanity. the name again, one more time. Paramahansa Yogananda. Excellent. Okay, we're going to talk about him afterwards. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. <laughs> All, right. All right. And number three. Okay. Uh, being a surfer. Yeah. It would have to be. Uh, Kelly Slater slash Laird Hamilton. Okay. Yeah. Kelly Slater has had held more world titles mm -hmm. of, than any other athlete ever in history of in any sport. Good for him. I believe yeah. he's at 12 world titles. Wow. Now. Okay, yeah. And he's no young spring chicken now either, mm -hmm. you know, but he's a high-performance surfer, you know, short border. And is he doing the big waves? Oh, he does it all. Yeah, oh, God, he was, does it all. They're scared to watch. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. and the other guy I mentioned yep. is one of the pioneers of toe-in surfing. You know, where the yes. jet ski yes. slings you around. Yeah. Right. He and, and Dave Kalama were two of the first to do that in, mm -hmm. in the islands. Uh, and Maui at Jaws at Piahi right. is, yep. is its actual name. Um, and I'm friends with his father, his stepfather, Billy Hamilton. Is really? A, an old-time friend of mine who makes boards for me and that. But Laird is just, I mean, my God, the courage mm. of this guy. And the imagination, too. I mean, he's always pushing the envelope. You know, he, he was uh, instrumental in the design of the new foil boards and all of that that right. have those keels, mm -hmm. like, like, you know, the new uh, open ocean race 
racing sailboats have, you know. Yeah. They're like this. They're almost like hydroplane. You're out of the water. It is hydroplane, yeah, really. Yeah. 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 So. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> and you're friends with his dad. Yes. And Laird. I know him. I Interesting. have yet to meet Kelly, and I'm really looking forward to that. Kelly's a musician as well. What instrument yeah. does he play? He plays guitar and, and writes songs and sings, and so many surf, great surfers do. Well, actually, he yeah. should get to know you. Wow, man, I'd, I'd be happy to play on your record. <laughs> he probably plays drums, though, too. I know Tom Curran does, another great surfer and singer-songwriter. Well, yeah. the physicality, the emotion, yeah, it does a lot. Like we were talking about with your rotator cuff, you were saying that it hurts a little bit. But yeah. at the same time, being able to do all those movements. I mean, heck, yes. I've known people who are in their 90s who, as they're playing or stretching around, People yeah. who are in their 70s can't do that. Yes. But because you're moving and getting everything going. Oh, man, that's mm. so true. Mm. That's so true. And I don't know whether you know of that organization, Eddie Taduri started. Oh, yes. Trap. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Oh, man, mm. the rhythmic arts, whatever it is. Uh, it was because of uh, an unfortunate body surfing accident. He, he sort of did, was yeah. pile driven into the sand in his neck, and he became like a paraplegic mm -hmm. there for a while but he discovered that if he were playing rhythms and that he actually was able to move mm. you know or i mean ultimately not initially but then he went ah so he actually has paraplegic and quadriplegic people in drum circles with shakers and tambourines and everything that couldn't move before that are moving right I mean, that's yeah. the power of yeah. rhythm. My God, it's incredible, man. <laughs> it is. It moves you. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's vital to the human being. Oh, God, we yeah. need it, man. <laughs> I, I need it. <laughs> okay. If you couldn't play drums. Uh -huh. I think I know what your second choice of profession oh, would be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have something to do with the ocean. <laughs> I think it sure. might. <laughs> <laughs> Would yeah. it be surfing or would it be a uh, discovery? Well, no, that's a good, good question. I don't know. I never really uh, became certified as a scuba diver. You didn't. You should. No, I, I know. Mm. I would love to. But now I wonder, as a unilunger, with having one lung, I have to, I have to look into that. You can. You probably but couldn't I, do deep dives, but you could still yeah. do. Yeah, you can do 60 and I, feet. I have, I, I have before yeah. surgery, yeah. you know. So, but, uh, but definitely something in in the surfing industry. Yeah, man. <laughs> Absolutely. We got more I get to, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too much skin in the game not to. What's so, the strangest yeah. venue in which you played? And what made it that way? Oh, oh man. I got one for you. Okay. <laughs> Kenny Loggins, yep. right here in San Diego yep. at SeaWorld, Shamu Stadium. You, and we were where, you know, they where Shamu would come up. and You're playing you know, on that surface? We played on that surface. Oh, the band man. was here. And Kenny was was running back and forth on the dry area, right? And the audience was way on the other side of the water. And he's trying to get the audience up and everything. And uh, right where Shamu would do it, come up, belly up on there, he steps off into it with his guitar on. And we're all going, <gasps> he's going to go up in a puff of green smoke or something. Gratefully, he had the presence of mind mm -hmm. to not touch his guitar. <laughs> or there would be no more Kenny Loggins. And this is like 1977 or oh, 78. Man. That's that's absolutely the weirdest place. You know? oh, <laughs> well, man. Shamu wasn't there, was he? No, no, Shamu, <laughs> great yeah. yeah, he might have thankfully. taken an exception, you know. <laughs> Get out of here, Loggins. Well, th <laughs> thankfully somebody thought, you know, maybe we shouldn't have the whale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lose the whale. But that guy's smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I guess this might actually end up being the same thing. Something that you'd say, you know what? I would never do that again. <laughs> uh, yeah, <that's laughs> that, it was that the same thing. <laughs> but considering my uh, my altered uh, stature and and uh, having to go into the body shop and and mm. remove some parts, I'd probably say smoking. You That's smoked? Some, yeah, I yep. oh I did. Yeah, yeah. And then I quit. Oddly enough, like 12 years before there was any repercussions. Mm. And I was a runner, you know, and running, you know, mi miles a day and mm -hmm. working out in the gym and feeling very strong and yep. surfing, you know, for me, big waves on Kauai. Yeah. And uh, no symptoms whatsoever. So Came later. Smoking. Yeah. And, yep. and, and vaping. They don't know about yet. 
And I, yeah, anytime I'm, you heat something like that, a chemical, yeah, it's going to yeah. change. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. And they, yeah. they suspect. So, yeah. so I wouldn't do that either. I've never have. But, right. you know, it came after my... Well, no, much, much later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. I probably would have. And if you could learn... Mm-hmm. Any type of rhythm. Take you know, take the blue pill or the red pill. You take the blue <laughs> pill, and you can learn any type of rhythm. Okay. What would it be? Oh man. And why? Okay. I have long been so intrigued by bebop drumming. Ah, sure. I love playing playing it, yep. but only to a certain threshold. I, for whatever reason, being primarily self-taught, mm-hmm. I'm sure has some some something to do with it. But really up tempo bop, like dang it, lang, lang, lang. Ah, okay. I have a problem with that. I, I, uh, I, I just can't sustain it and, and play it properly. And, and bebop drumming to me, mm-hmm. to really do it right, you have to live it, you know? Yeah. And those guys that do it really well mm. and have done it really well, yeah. they lived it, man, you know? And I know there are so many great players nowadays that can so can play play that and play everything else. But I never got to that point where I could play a really fast bebop. Mm. And I'd like to be able to do that. Yeah, you know? I get that. I'm studying right now uh, with a, a hand, the hand guru. He was the heir apparent to Freddie Gruber, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bruce Be- Becker is his name. And uh-huh. he's a brilliant teacher. I don't know Bruce. Yeah, he's a brilliant teacher, and so I'm finally at my ripe old age addressing my <laughs> my lack of technique, and I've been studying with him now for a while, and I'm actually I'm starting to see the light. You know? So so maybe I will be able to, to go fast. You well, know? do you do you ever get to hang out like like well, for example, in New York, if you're playing in New York, do you get to hang out with people like uh, Jimmy Cobb or, or or players of that oh, nature that you could talk with and and I would love to. But I, I really haven't. I mean, I've, I've hung with Gad, yep. you know, who is, yep. to my mind, one of the greatest musicians of, mm. of all time. Yeah. Yep. I mean, all round musicians. Well, but, anybody but, uh, who can hear and see what he does oh, and then translate it, yeah. yeah, it's oh, pretty amazing. Man, totally. Yep. Yep. But, uh, but as far as beboppers, no, I have not had that privilege yet. Man, and I would love to do that. <laughs> As really a, the, there's a lady Helen Keene who was a uh, manager of, of Miles Davis for for years and, and uh-huh. great lady uh-huh. and uh, I was telling her about um, uh, some of the young lines that were coming out in the late late 80s early 90s uh-huh. and how much I like them she said yes they're very good players they don't have enough soul and I said well uh-huh. what do you mean she said they haven't lived it and and you're right there's there's yeah having learned one style of music uh-huh. and played that and gone off the to learn that bebop yeah. There is a certain life that you have to live to really get that. Absolutely, yeah. Andy. I totally believe that, mm. man. I, and speaking of Willie Ornelas, <laughs> Willie. he said the funniest thing was <laughs> we were watching <laughs> this really, really like accomplished young player, man. Chops up the wazoo, you know. <laughs> yeah. Man, it was just amazing how much he had amassed, you mm. know, in, in his short short time on earth but uh i was i was just going wow i was looking really going wow man he he said yeah but i don't think he's got he he doesn't have enough pork and pain in his life yet (laughs) and we know what he's talking about we do man Oh man, Tris, <laughs> this has been great. Oh, Thanks, man. I really man, appreciate your you. time. It's been a <laughs> lot of fun. You. It sure has, brother. <laughs> and <right>. folks, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Thank you. <laughs>